in the intra-op area, same thing. The block technology is the same throughout each and every workflow. So every workflow over here is going to have the block technology here. These will be in the order that you want them to be in, okay? What's, di what's different from workflow to workflow are the blocks, but multiple blocks can be used in multiple locations or multiple areas as well, okay? So here's the allergies again. Here's the room time in. I can't do a room time in until the H&P attestation has been done. Okay, so that is a hard stop. There are several hard stops. If the consent here too, the consent has not been signed, so I can't do a room time in in the intra-op until that's been done. Okay, physician orders. Here's my intra-op orders. Just like pre-op, I'm only gonna see the ones that are exclusive to me. I've got positioning, I've got positioning aids, prep, surgical safety checklist. My timeout will be here as well, my incision start time. All of these are blocks that are located within the intra-op workflow. You may or may not use all of these blocks or you may use more. However you choose to set up your chart is how we would set it up for you. Let's look at the implant log. If I'm a nurse and I'm documenting that there's an implant being used, I'm just gonna click on the plus sign. I'm gonna add this implant. That implant will flow back into practice management as well, which will then flow all the way through billing into charge entry if your billers are billing out a case and there is an implant in the implant log that has not been charged in that charge entry, they're going to get a warning that says, hey, are you sure you want to complete this billing because you have a charge for the implant that's been in the implant log, okay? So I'm not going to go through every single workflow. I do want to show you the physician workflow. So when I log out, I'm going to log in as a physician so I can show you how few clicks they have to do their workflow. Okay. So first thing you're going to notice is that Dr. Park only sees Dr. Park's cases. The, re the rest of the cases that were on that schedule are not Dr. Park's. So I'm logged in as Dr. Park. I see my two cases for the day. All I, and this being a web-based application, the physician can log in from anywhere. They can log in from their home. They can log in from their office, the beach, wherever they are. They can log in and complete a lot of the pre-charting prior to the data, or a lot of the charting, not the pre-charting. They can do a lot of the charting prior to the date of service, with the exception of those things that have to be done on the date of service, such as the attestation, things of that nature. That has to be done. The consent has to be done on the date of service, things of that nature. But the orders, things like that, that can be done prior to, so that about 35 to 40% 40, 40 of the chart is already completed by the date of service, okay? So when I open this up, this is the same patient we've been looking at. I don't have to come over here and look for my workflow. It goes right to my physician workflow, okay? I can uh, review my documents here, my H&P, my EKG. I can just acknowledge that. That's one click. Here are my orders. Obviously, as a physician, I'm going to see pre-op, PACU, intra-op, anesthesia, all my orders, I'm going to see all of those here. Uh, to sign off on them, it's just one click. Click select all and sign. Except it's automatically going to default to me. Okay, that populates here. Here's my history and physical attestation. It's going to tell me it's stored in Document Central, which is deposit, I'm sorry, the document repository that we have in practice management. Any addenda that I have, we've gone over it with the patient. Hit sign. That's three clicks. Got that signature. Here's the consent. The consent has already been signed off on. So all I have to do is acknowledge that. 